Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grove Group and Discipleship Director here at FaithBridge and I'm here with founding pastor Ken Orline who just brought us a word from Revelation 2.5, but really more than that, Ken, you brought us a testimony of what God's doing in your soul. Yeah. And uh, I know I've talked to so many since that um, just examining our own souls from what you went through has led to such a revival and um, just felt like God opened our eyes too to things uh, today. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. It, sure. it, it was a different kind of sermon, so this is going to be a different kind of postscript. Sure. Uh, we'll just chat about it. Yeah. Um, talk to me, though, about um, as if maybe I was a skeptic who was in the room today. Mm. Maybe I'm new to Faith Bridge, don't know you that well, mm. or um, don't have a lot of experience with church. Mm. Um, I might be led to, to not really understand this or think, sure. um, so just mustering no. this up because he wants something from us or he's going <laughs> to ask something for us. Yeah, um, no. yeah right. Yeah. No, that's very fair. Um, I tried to talk to that person even in the end when we were praying, especially the person who's skeptical because they've never stepped into the circle of faith in the first place. Um, talk of God things in our souls is never going to make sense if one tries to understand it from the outside looking in. And so, I would say, first of all, if the skeptical person is coming from a a pre-Christian place, then my word is, you need Jesus. Come to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Um, but what about the skeptic who's like, no, no, I have Jesus. Um, but part of me was feeling like I'm a little on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm trying to figure out again, what is going on inside of him? Or is he just really mustering up the energy? Is that sort of the question? Well, I would say simply, if you know me well, uh, you know I'm, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to be pretty transparent about uh, what's up and what's down and what's here and what's there and kind of what's going on in my soul, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing, as I shared in the message today, because I shudder to think uh, if there's been a malaise in my soul, how many people may have sort of taken their lead, if not actively, passively from me and how uh, perhaps as a church, even, there's been a sluggishness. I talked to a couple just after service, came up crying, hugging me, known me forever, and I them, and they said, you just have no idea. We were just thinking we've got to leave the church, um, and we've been praying and praying and praying, and then look at this, and we repent because we didn't ever come and talk to you. And I said, you know, the thing is, if you'd have come and talked to me, I probably would have looked at you like, oh, they're going through something. And just, I don't think my soul was in a point mm -hmm. to comprehend. So sometimes the Lord just has to do, uh, sort of touch a person's mm -hmm. soul. Um, I don't have, uh, but no, I have no agenda. I wouldn't even planning on preaching the sermon, as you well know, because uh, you were in that meeting. Uh, the sermon was going to be somebody else, but everybody just came out of the staff link meeting and said, you just, you have to share that because it's real and it's fresh and it's just what God is doing inside of you. So I, I don't have anything to prove and I couldn't prove it even if I did, other than just to say, no, this is just kind of my testimony and, and what's going on inside of me. Um, uh, in terms of where does it go? Yeah, what, uh, that was gonna be my next question. Yeah, so yeah, what's sure. next for faith? Yeah, well, right, I don't know, but it's gonna be exciting. Um, I think, uh, I really have been living with Revelation 2, 5, this whole concept of remembering, repenting, and returning to what you once knew and what you once did. And, um, and so I think maybe that's the sequence that we're going to follow corporately. Um, you know, as a congregation, 
re remembering, repenting, and uh, returning. I think one of the fastest ways and most measurable uh, of returning is just right here in what I was pointing out, the great assembly. Mm -hmm. The psalmist talks about the great assembly right here in worship. Just, okay, um, there's, n there's a lot of uh, pathways that we cross paths with, but never do all of them converge like worship. Mm -hmm. That's where most everybody has some touch point with us and we with them. And so I think um, objective number one for me is we've got to focus on our worship service. It's, that has to do with what's going into the, them on our end, the, the production, the planning side of that um, and the preparation for that. But it has to do with the congregation as well mm -hmm. in, the, in the showing up not like zombies. Yeah, well, the expectation that, yeah. that God is going to do I'm ready. something. I don't know what yeah. he's going to do, but I'm going to. Yeah. And, and which really was mm -hmm. how uh, s some of us remember worship every Sunday when we were in the school or even when we'd moved in here, but on the new side. And I, I think that's probably the, the most mm -hmm. measurable thing I could say right now. Because um, I don't want to get lost in the doing mm -hmm. because you, we're a good doing church. There's a lot of people that are still doing a lot of things and serving. Several of them came up and hugged me and they, they, they do, 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 do. But they said, oh, that was so good for my soul because I realized I've been lulled into this sort of sleepwalking of the soul myself. And I've been losing my first love as well. Hadn't affected their serving because mm -hmm. they're good, faithful, dependable souls that they're just going to show up out of duty. So that's why I don't, I, I hesitate to say so, and here's step two and here's step three, and because right. then we'll just start doing. And I don't, I think, mm -hmm. you know, in my own personal soul, I think um, sort of next steps are just a, a reinvigorated walk with the Lord, mm -hmm. which when I am doing well, always manifests in my leadership. And, um, and so uh, uh, I'm not scrambling for, uh, you know, a, a new target on the wall. Let's run out and hit that. But uh, rather, no, I'm going in to my closet with mm -hmm. the Lord, the prayer closet, like he said, and I'm just going to spend time with him and let him, and he'll, in time, he'll tell me what the next, next. practical yeah. steps are, are visible, tangible steps that we take as a body are. I think uh, for now though, for today, let's focus on worship, uh, coming back to the great assembly and uh, seeing that re reinvigorated and revitalized. Um, that's probably enough for today. It's an exciting time. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Um, and uh, as more, I know as more people continue to pray in this way that God is going to reveal even more. Yeah. And um, so we wait in expectation. That's right. All mm -hmm. right. Well, thank you for your honesty and sure. transparency. Um, sure. I know that God will use it. Amen. All right. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.